Shalom, first and foremost, I'm going to give our praises to the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakak Kadash. Double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. And peace, love, and salutation to all you Aki that's pushing his truth and truth and sincerity. Just getting back to the basics. So I'm going to type this in right here and see if it pops up in the Bible. And this is going to be the title of the lesson. Let's see where God loves everybody at, is at in the Bible. It says, there is no concordance results for God and loves and everybody in the KJV. So there's no scripture that said God loves everybody. Let's get this precept right quick. That's what the lesson is going to be on. That's of men. Ecclesiastes 7 and 29. Lo, this only have I found that the most high have made man upright. They have sought out many inventions. And saying that God loves everybody and come as you are and salvation is for everyone. That is a that that is an invention of man. All right. Um what's that scripture? I think it's in the same chapter, if I'm not mistaken. Bear me for a sec. Um But God does not uh, love everybody, all right? That's what's something that's being preached in these churches. <clears throat> this is uh, Jeremiah 17 and 9. The heart is deceitfully above all things and desperately wicked who can know it. And that's just a wicked envision saying God loves everybody. When there's scriptures clearly established that the God of the Bible, Yahweh, all right, and his son Yahweh shall are dealing with the Israelites. All right, so God does not love everybody. And this is just a product of supersessionism once again. Supersessionism or replacement theology is the Christian doctrine that the Christian church has superseded the Israelites. All right, those people over there, they're not the Israelites. Okay, the, those ish people, those are not the Israelites. Okay, the ones that came over here in cargo slave ships, the ones that were already over here. And then this red man took the land and said it was his and called it America. Those are the Israelites, not those people over there that formed the state of Israel in 1948. So it says supersessionism, also replacement theology, is the Christian doctrine that the Christian church has superseded the Israelites, assuming their role as God's covenanted people. That's where you get God loves everybody. So basically, Christianity just said, hey, look, we're going to take over. And God loves everybody. Come as you are. Okay? Come as you are. No, that's not in the Bible, man. All right? It says, thus asserting that the new covenant through who the world calls Jesus Christ, but his real name is Yahweh Shai, has superseded or replaced the Mosaic covenant. Well, it tells you in Hebrews 8 and 8 that the God of the Bible in the New Testament will make a second covenant with the house of Israel. And he will put the law, statutes, commandments and to the inward part. So where, where is this coming from? All right. This is a wicked invention. All right. Let's go to Revelation 22 and 18. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. And Christians don't deal with prophecy. What's going on over there? All right. In these different parts of the country, the wars and rumors of wars. When's the last time you heard a Christian talk about wars and rumors of wars and how it's related to biblical prophecy? Never. It says, if any man shall add unto these things, God loves everybody, come as you are, salvation for everybody. God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in his book. And one of the plagues is in Zechariah 14 and 12, which goes into the intercontinental ballistic missile destruction. So if you teach these things, all right, you got a missile with your name on it. And there's a lot of Israelite camps. Hey, there was one guy in particular. I think they live here in Atlanta. Their, their name was uh, Karaf Israel. Let's see if I can pull it up. They, they did a street teaching lesson called God Loves Everybody. And they started giggling because they know that's false. All right. They just wanted to come up against the sound doctrine. Uh, Revelation 22 and 19. And if any man shall take away from the words of the prophecy of this book, the most I shall take away his part out of the book of life. Yeah. Saying that the Christian church has superseded the Israelites. Where is that in the Bible? See, these people like to say, you know, the Israelites, 
they just did so much that God just said, you know what, I'm just going to give salvation to everybody. Where is that in the Bible? And the Gentiles who are uh, in the conversation for salvation, that rhymes, all right, those are Israelite foreigners. Those are the ones who uh, were Hellenized, the ones who shaved off their beards, the ones who shaved their heads bald, all right, who started wearing the uh, clothing of the Greeks, who started eating food, abominable foods that they shouldn't eat. Those were Israelites. That was the whole gospel of Paul going to the Gentiles, the Israelite foreigners. See, a Christian don't even know that. That might be the next lesson. So it says, And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, the Most High shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. So I got a few precepts. I think I still got a few to type up. But uh, let's go to Deuteronomy, the seventh chapter. A clear example of God doesn't love everybody in the Bible. All right. Now you people will be like, oh, that's that's the Old Testament. Well, in Psalms 40 and 7, let's get that right quick. I don't want to chop it up. Psalms 40 and 7. Psalms 40 and 7. Then said, I, lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me. This book is written about the Alpha and Omega. All right, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, real name Yahweh Shad. From, the, from Genesis to Revelation is about the only begotten son. So how could you say that the Old Testament is done away with? When in the Old Testament, it prophesies about the Messiah, Messiah coming onto the earth in his second return. All right. And there's another one in um, 2 Timothy in the New Testament for you people. Hey, because the scriptures say, blessed is he that readeth. There's no God loves everybody in the Bible. 2 Timothy 3 and 16, all scripture is inspired. All scripture is given by inspiration of the Most High. And it's profitable for doctrine. For reproof. We have to reprove these things. All right. Because they are man-made. We have to break down these strongholds that's been taught to our people. The so-called blacks, Hispanics, Native Americans, and Israelite foreigners that are scattered. Because yes, as I always say in my lessons, you're going to have... Some people that look like so-called white people and their lines gonna go, out, go go back to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You got brothers in Great Mill song right now who look like so-called white men, but they're clearly Israelites. You gotta try the spirit by the spirit. It says for reproof, for correction. We have to come up and, and clean up after the shoddy work of Christianity. For instruction in righteousness. The Christians aren't give you instructions in righteousness, man. They give you that little Sunday sermon and people automatically go to Golden Corral and get that pork chop plate. All right. So let's go to Deuteronomy um, 7. All right. Deuteronomy 7 and verse 1. When the Lord, the Lord's name is Yahweh, thy power shall bring thee into the land, whether thou goest to possess it, and have cast out many nations before thee, the Hittites and the Girgashites, and the Amorites, and the Canaanites, and the Perizzites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites, seven nations greater and mightier than thou. And when the Lord thy power shall deliver them before thee, thou shalt smite them and utterly destroy them. That's not love. Okay? When, when the Israelites were going into the land of milk and honey, the land of Canaan, these were their instructions. This is what the God of the Bible said he was going to do to these other nations outside the nation of Israel. That's not love, man. So where are you people getting God loves everybody? Let me read that again. Deuteronomy 7 and 2. And when the Lord, the Lord's name is Jehovah, thy power shall deliver them before thee, thou shalt smite them and utterly destroy them. That's, that, that was God's message to the Israelites to get rid of these other heathen nations. Thou shalt make no covenant with them, nor show mercy unto them. Because... The God of the Bible, Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai, knew, all right, that our people went to idol worship. They just got, um, Moses came out of Mount Sinai and Israelites were worshiping a golden calf. It even tells you in Jeremiah, let's get that right quick. <clears throat> Jeremiah 10 and verse 1. Hear ye the word which the Lord speaketh unto you, O house of Israel. It's all about Israel. Lord is speaking to Israel, not the other 17 nations. 
Thus saith the Lord, learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the heathen are dismayed at them. Like you, that, that was clearly with that uh, eclipse. What, what was that back in April, April the 8th? People were dismayed. Oh, oh we're going to sit in front of a... Oh. They, they're sitting in front all right, of a um, you know festival looking at the uh, eclipse. And we know what time it is, man. We know that the God of the Bible is working, man. All right? But the God of the Bible, Yahweh Bashem al didn't want the Israelites to follow these other nations. And it says it in Deuteronomy 7. Deuteronomy 7. <laughs> Let me read verse 2 again. It's to drive the point home. And when the Lord thy power shall deliver them before thee, thou shalt smite them and utterly destroy them. That's not love, man. The Lord gave them the green light to destroy these other nations. Thou shalt make no covenant with them, nor show mercy unto them. That's not love. Neither shalt thou make marriages with them. Thy daughter thou shalt not give unto his son, nor his daughter shalt thou take unto thy son. For they will turn away thy son from following me, that they may serve other gods. That, that, that's the whole point. We're, we're a holy nation. We're separate from these other nations. So will the anger of the Lord be kindled against you and destroy thee suddenly. That, that's a heavy consequence, man. Right? So um, there was a scripture that I wanted to bring out. Um, Amos 3. Because the Lord is not dealing with these other nations, man. It says all the tribes are guilty. The tribes of who? The tribes of Israel. The 12 tribes. Not the whole world. And a lot of people don't even know the biblical nationalities of these other nations. Like you had this guy, this president from uh, Iran that so-called got deleted in a helicopter crash. He would be considered a Persian. Okay? In the Bible... That uh, particular people are Elamites. Okay? Christians won't teach you that. They just say God loves everybody and that's it. Close the book. Let's go to Golden Corral. Amos 3 and 1. Hear this word that the Lord has spoken against you, O children of Israel. So the, on, in this particular part of the Bible, it was, and there's a lot of parts of the scriptures where the God of the Bible is getting down on his own people. He's just correcting them. Hear this word that the Lord has spoken against you, O children of Israel, against the whole family which I have brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, You only have I known of all the families of the earth, therefore I will punish you for all your iniquities. So the God of the Bible has only known the Israelites. Now when it comes to you other nations, this is what it says in 2nd Ezra, the 6th chapter, which the Apocrypha was taken out of the, the King James 1611 Bible, and what 1878 with the Bible Destruction Group, all right? Because there's a lot of history in in the um, in the Apocrypha. You have uh, Hanukkah, all right? Kanaka, that's in the uh, Apocrypha. You have uh, the Maccabees, and you also have scriptures like this. No wonder why Esau, who's a self-proclaimed white man, he's not white, he's red, and God doesn't love him either. Took it out the Bible. There's a punishment for that. You added and taken away from the Bible, as we already established in Revelation 22 and 18, you're gonna get hit with you're gonna get hit with the plagues. And one of the ultimate one is that thermonuclear destruction. So let's go to uh second Ezra chapter six and verse fifty-four. And after these Adam also, whom thou madest Lord of all thy creatures, of him come we all. Yeah, we call come from Adam that you know. Christian child tell you that, yeah, it says in the second as it's six and fifty-four. And the people also whom thou hast chosen. All this have I spoken before thee, O Lord, because thou madest the world for our sakes. The Lord made the earth for the Israelites' sake. Look at look, the scriptures say the earth is given into the hand of the wicked. We clearly know that Esau Edom is control of the earth. And look how he's running the earth right now. You're getting sprayed with chemicals every day. You're eating GMO foods, eating fast food, the water is tainted. You got you got forever chemicals in your shower water. This guy is not unprofitable to the earth, man. He was created to be the wicked. Lord, when I can get that one. And here's the point: Second Ezra six and fifty six. As for the other people, all the other seventeen nations that's contained in Genesis the tenth chapter, which Christians don't go into. As for the other people which also come of Adam, thou hast said that they are nothing. 
Does that sound like love? No. But be like unto spittle. When you spit that loogie, because you got to clear your throat, that's, what, that's how the Lord feels about these other nations, man. And has likened the abundance of them unto a drop that falleth from a vessel. So that's how the God of the Bible feels about you other nations, man. And especially you, Esau, okay, the self-proclaimed white man. He's not white, he's red. And like I said, as a balance, our people have been scattered according to Deuteronomy 2864. So yes, you're going to have some people that look like so-called white people, but they're really Israelites. Okay, especially those people over there in, in the land of Israel right now. Out of, out, of some, out of some of them imposters, there's going to be some Israelites that look like those people. All right? You got Israelites in that land right now because we've been scattered according to Deuteronomy 28 and 64. Now it says God's love for Jacob. It don't say God's love for the whole world. Malachi 1 and 1. The burden of the word of the Lord by Israel to Israel by Malachi. I love you, saith the Lord. Yet ye say, wherein hast thou loved us? Was not Esau Jacob's brother, saith the Lord? Yet I love Jacob. It says, yet I love Jacob. Okay, let's 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 stop right here. The Lord loves Jacob. He doesn't love the whole world. Malachi three and verse six: For I am the Lord. The Lord's name is Yahweh. I change not. The Lord doesn't change. He didn't say, "Oh, my bad." You know, like with you Christians, it's not like God. The Bible said. Yeah, my bad. You know, these Israelites, man, they've been acting up, man. You know what, man? I'm just gonna I'm just gonna give salvation to everybody. You know, I love everybody. No, the, the God of the Bible does not change. You people don't read these scriptures, man. Now all of a sudden you guys want to read Malachi and Obadiah. <laughs> For I am the Lord, I change not, therefore you sons of Jacob are not consumed. Alright, so the God of the Bible does not change, man. Christianity changes. Ways of men changes. The God of the Bible, Yahweh Shemel Shai, doesn't change. Malachi 1 and 3, and I hated Esau. When you go back to Genesis 25 and 27, you have Jacob and Esau. All right, and they were never meant to get along, even to this day. And I hated Esau and laid his mountains and his heritage waits for the dragons of the wilderness. Whereas Edom say, now Esau, Edom, all right, that's the nation of red people. Whereas Edom said, we are empowered, but we will return and build the desolate places. Yes, they came out of <clears throat> the caves, and now I look at them now. They have these skyscrapers here in America and around the world. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, they shall build. They're still building to this day, but I will throw down. The Lord is going to throw down with thermonuclear destruction. In America, Babylon the Great, which is also known as Basra in the Bible, where Edomites inhabit it will be destroyed. And they shall call them the border of wickedness. Do you think God loves wickedness? No. Edomites are the border of wickedness, man. And I'm not gonna really get into it, but hey, you see hey man, first and foremost, man, they don't they 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 eat they they eat they meat red, man. They they eat they like a tartar. Okay? That's just one indication. They love raw meat. It says, they shall build what I will throw down, and they shall call them the border of wickedness, and the people against the Lord have indignation forever. Let's get this word indignation. And when you look up the Bible dictionary, Esau is the nation that has no place for repentance at all. All right? So y'all can live it up, man, because, hey, this place is going to be taken out of. And according to Revelation 13, 9 and 10, Jeremiah 30 and 16, Isaiah, the fourth chapter and various other passages in the Bible, you Edomites will be going into slavery. So live it up right now. All right. Go to all the Braves games. Go to go to all the Yankees games that you want. Um, go take trips around the world like you do spreading your wickedness. But it's, it's going to come to an end. All right indignation it says displeasure a provocation calls for indignation all right it says at the top fury 
rage or disrespect. So the God of the Bible has a rage <laughs> for you Edomites, man. It's not love. Indignation don't mean love, man. Right? Let's get it in the New Testament. I'm just, just wrap it up. All right, the point has pretty much been made. Romans 9 and 11. And this lesson is just a milk lesson. This is, you know, for brothers just waking up, you know, you have to go into these, uh, as we call them, basic scriptures. All right, the milk scriptures to um, pretty much establish these scriptures, man. Right? Because God don't love everybody. As you can see, it's not in the Bible. Now, let's go to Proverbs 16 right quick. Proverbs 16 and 4. Proverbs 16 and 4. The Lord hath made all things for himself. Yea, even the wicked for the day of evil. So the God of the Bible created to wi the wicked so they can destroy themselves. Okay? The God of the Bible created the wicked, Esau, Edom, who was called the border of wickedness because we had to learn, all right, how to be in order in these last days by being in this wicked society ran by Esau, Edom. The scriptures say the earth is given into the hand of the wicked. And the scriptures te clearly tell you that the God of the Bible has indignation, fury, and rage for the Edomites. So that's not love. All right? All that love. They don't love you any either. That's why we call them the devil. They'll deceive you to think that, oh, yes, that's a nice little, you know, red person, you know, Gretchen from the job. No, she's the devil, man. She's the deceiver, man. And look at this devil's track history, man, even here in America. All right, look what happened with the transatlantic slave trade all the way to today. Our people are jacked up. They got what, post-traumatic slave syndrome? They believe that the Messiah is a so-called white man with uh, blonde hair and blue eyes. Our people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. That's why we have to come out here and establish these lessons to the spirit and power of Yahweh Hashem Shai. All right, and we learn this from our apostles and elders of Great Millstone. So it says the Lord have made all things for himself, yea, even the wicked for the day of evil. All these intercontinent ballistic missiles, according to Isaiah 54 and 16 and 17, the guy of the Bible put that on the spirit of these Edomites, starting with those Germans like Otto Hahn and J. Robert Oppenheimer. They had a movie called Oppenheimer so they can destroy their own selves in World War III. So that's not love, man. Okay, so God does not love everybody. Let's get this last precept. Now, this is reiterated in the New Testament. For you naysayer, oh, I don't, I don't go by the Old Testament. Well, it, said, it reiterates, okay? Because when Paul was on the scene, Peter was on the scene, our Lord Yahweh was on the scene, they didn't have the New Testament. They were fulfilling the New Testament, man. They were, they were being written about when they were going back to the Old Testament and reading. This is Romans 9 and 11. For the children being not yet born, that's talking about Jacob and Esau, according to Genesis, the 25th chapter. Matter of fact, I'm going to get that right quick. Just real quick. Just one, one quick scripture. I think it's Genesis 25 and 27. Genesis 25. Genesis 25. And um, let me just start at 21. And Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife because she was barren. And the Lord was entreated of him and Rebekah, his wife, conceived. And the children struggled together within her. And she said, if it be so, why am I thus? And she went to inquire of the Lord. And the Lord said unto her, two nations are in thy womb. So it's going to be one nation right here and one nation right here in the womb. Two different nations and two manner of people. When you look at Esau, Edom, and then you look at, on the other hand, so-called Black, Hispanic, and Native Americans, that's two different nations. Look at, look at how they dance. Look how they cook their food. They don't have any flavor at all. They're dry, okay? They have no rhythm, no nothing. They just know how to steal, kill, and rob, man, and destroy it. Like that movie Problem Child. It says, two nations are in thy womb, and two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels. So there's a, there's a distinct separation between Jacob and Esau. We weren't meant to get along with Esau. And there's, cho there's chocolate-covered Edomites, too, because, you know, the women of our nation like to get with these men of their nation, and those kids come out being Edomites. So, yes, 
Not every Edomite is going to be red. They're going to be different shades of brown as well. Those are called tares. It says, Two nations are in thy womb, and two men or people shall be separated from thy bowels, and the one people shall be stronger than the other, and the elder shall serve the younger. And that hasn't been fulfilled yet. The elder brother was Esau, as it's going to go, go into. And he's going to serve us when they go into slavery, whether you believe it or not. And when her days to be delivered were fulfilled, behold, there were twins in her womb, and the first came out red. When you look at these people, man, they're not white like a piece of notebook paper, man. They're not white like the white t-shirt that you get at the gas station. It's 87 degrees outside, and when you see them walk outside when it's hot, they get red. When they blush, they get red. When they get into fights and scuffles, they turn red. Okay? And the first came out red all over like a hairy garment, and, his, and they called his name Esau. Now that Hebrew word is Aishashua, which means wasted away as he. His pigment was wasted away. That's the only nation out here right now who has no pigmentation. And after that came his brother out. No, no recollect, no instance of his the color of his brother, because at, at, at that time, everybody except for Esau was a different shade of brown. We're not black. We're different shades of brown. We're not black like the uh, pavement. Or that black t-shirt that you get from the uh you know from the gas station man they're not white and we're not black okay that's just a play on your head it says and after that came his brother out and he took hold on esau's hill and that's spiritual all right because that's a sick that's signifying that esau will be taken down by jacob the guy of the bible is going to take down Esau and put up one who's profitable which are the Israelites okay and his name was called Jacob all right Jacob means Jacob in the Hebrew which is supplanter and Isaac was three score years old when she bare them let's go to 27 and the boys grew and Esau was a cunning hunter that that's why they got Cabela uh, Cabela's and uh, these these uh, hunting shops on the side of the highway they're into hunting and guess what? They like hunting so-called blast Hispanics and Native Americans too. So no, they're not your friend. And God does not love everybody. He does not love Esau. A man of the field and a Jacob and Jacob was a plain man dwelling in tents. Alright. So let's go back to that uh Romans 9 and close it on now. I didn't intend it to me this long, but hey, that's the spirit. All right, Romans 9 and verse 11. So God does not love everybody. It's not in the Bible, and there's plenty of scriptures that prove that God is dealing with the Israelites. All right, and you nations, all right, it doesn't look like it right now, but eventually you nations were created to be servants under the Israelites in the kingdom of heaven. Read Isaiah the 14th chapter. It says, for the, children not, for, for the children being not yet born, neither have done any good or evil, that the purpose of the Most High according to election might stand, not of works, but of him that calleth. It was said unto her, the elder shall serve the younger. That's in Genesis, the 25th chapter. As it is written in the Old Testament, all right, the Most High doesn't change. Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. That's not, God doesn't love everybody, man. What shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with, is there unrighteousness with God? God forbid. No, there's no unrighteousness with the Most High. This is his program. Take that up with the Most High. He inspired men to write down his words, okay? Verse 15, For he said to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. And eventually the whole nation of Israel, the Lord is going to have compassion on the whole nation of Israel because two-thirds two of our own people are running the muck after the ways of the heathen and they got to get put down all right so with that lord when i was edifying shalom